Hi, I'm Kathy at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. You can see that it's snowing here on this beautiful day. Um, are you ready to experience birding like you've never experienced birding before? How often is it that you get to see tropical birds next to birds from Spain? Well, today is going to be a special day indeed as we travel the globe to go birding. Are you ready to go birding? Let's see what we can find. Do we have anyone? Who has a bird in the scope they want to share? Oh, Brittany and Javi in Texas. Look at that beautiful gray blue heron. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning. It's what a beautiful. contrast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, big contrast. We're right, we're it's a beautiful morning here on South Padre Island on the shores of the Laguna Madre. We're here on the southern coastal tip of Texas at the South Padre Island Burning and Nature Center. It's a nice tide out here on the flats. We're looking at a, our great blue heron friend here, just starting his day. Um, this is a symbolic birds of these wetlands and this time of year, when it gets cold up where, where you guys are at, they all come down our way. Yeah, there are no great blue herons here. <laughs> See, there's a few more here hanging around. Oh, so nice. I'll trade you. <laughs> they've come down here where it's nice and warm for the winter time. This time of year, well, they're here year round, but this time of year, all of a sudden we get a big influx of them. And we'll have 30 to 40 sometimes out here on the, on the flats all hanging around together. Plenty of fish to eat for them. Oh, hi, wow. Brittany. Hey. Hi, Javi, Katie. How are hey, you? Oh, good oh, morning. I just, I just, uh, I just move and let me readjust this. There, there Whoa. you go. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> well, let's add some tropical species resonate with rail. A little bit of overcast here in La Fortuna. I'm at a place called Bogarin Trail. And um, well, this is um, one of the two individuals that are just wandering in front of, in front of me at the moment. Um, a bird really wanted to see because it's the first time that he's added to a virtual bird tour uh, that we that we run around here. So it's a very special one that, uh, well, he's using this one area, getting some uh, earthworms and uh, getting some food. Beautiful uh, uh, herons back there, guys. Um, so nice yeah. contrast of colors too. Uh, green grass here, overcast with some colors, but really pretty species that also migrate to Costa Rica. Wow, that's a beautiful bird. Congrats on getting that on the broadcast. That's the first one. That's awesome. No kidding. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited about it, actually. Yeah, I came oh, here yeah. and I was crossing my fingers because I didn't know it was going to show up that close. But, yeah. you know, uh, sometimes you have to be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like a secretive bird. It is indeed. Yeah, this one and the other one that I'm uh, trying are quite popular in this location where I am at the moment. And probably, oh, see how, how it ran fast <laughs> to, the, to the edge. It was like, yeah. oh, I, I hear you. Oh, oh, there, yeah, there, there it is, you know. <laughs> so it's a really secret bird with a beautiful combination of colors. A couple of years ago, it was split it, um, into two ones. Uh, we have uh, both in Costa Rica, Rossett named Wood Rail, that is the one that is in view that our, our audience can, can enjoy. And the other one is the uh, gray cowl uh, that is also present in Costa Rica as well, uh, more towards the South Caribbean of, of the countries, uh, uh, Pacific side as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful bird. Hi, Keith, how are you? How are you doing? Hey guys, pretty good. So it's around uh, 9 p.m. here in Taiwan. And I decided to go out and try and find us something nocturnal um, and this here is one of the world's more range-restricted night herons. It's oh my a gosh! Night heron. Yeah, sorry, the, the visuals aren't so great, but I can't get too close without bugging it. And I uh, also don't want to shine too much light on it. But yeah, Malay night heron, which is um, probably more easily found in Taiwan than anywhere else on Earth. It's quite a scarce oh. bird elsewhere. But we're really lucky here in that they seem to have made a, a home in the cities, believe it or not. So I'm actually in an urban park in the middle of the second largest city oh, really? <laughs> in Taiwan. That's fantastic. So one of the world's most range-restricted herons, but that's the way birding goes. 
That's how birding goes. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, I'm just a couple hundred away, uh, a couple hundred meters away from uh, from the main uh, road here in, in Fortuna. So in case you hear some cars on the background, that's that's what it is. But here we're in the middle of a of an oasis, of an oasis of a bird. So great, great, great place. Oh, I'm just gonna move. Oh, no, um, it just something scared the bird, a bird that I really wanted wanted to see. I'm gonna keep the the, the wood rail in, in in view at the moment for you to to enjoy. And I'll I'll be pointing to, to the uh, to the theater where some chachalacas are coming, our national bird, and some other tanagers are also really really cool to uh, to so see. What's, what's your location, Anthony? I'm in uh, in La Fortuna. That is a region close to uh, an active volcano in Costa Rica called Arenal region. So we're on the um, Caribbean side of the of volcano. the country at the at, at the moment. Yeah, about 20, 20 kilometers away. From uh, Arenal Volcano, uh, very close to the uh, to the town. Hey, hey, oh, Juan hey, Diego. Hello, hello. Hey, Juan Diego. Sorry to interrupt. What you have there I'm for us? Sure, I'm not sure if this bird is gonna stay for that long. This is a true beauty. It's a female. It's a. It's called black crested coquette. And of course, as as you know, coquettes always deserve a special place in our hearts. <laughs> this is a beautiful female. Let me focus to make it sharper. Uh, this beautiful white band in the rump, uh, of course, is one of these trademarks of the coquettes in the genus Lophornis, one of the most spectacular hummingbirds in the world. And this is a female that just recently finished uh, his meal. He's been foraging around in this porter wheat flowers uh, and just recently finished his meal. And now he's resting a little bit, he's sitting on a little branch very close to me. He's not scared at all. But I'm not sure how long it's going to stay. Mail is around. So sometimes, I just a few seconds ago, I actually recorded in my Facebook Live I was doing to get prepared for this one. Um, I was filming this female and then the male came in and photobomb on the female and start displaying. So they might do it here if we are lucky. But yes, um, I'm right now, I'm here in the Arnold uh, Observatory Lodge in the Arnold Foothills, a little bit higher than Anthony. In Costa Rica, let me show you the settings. Look at this beautiful volcano there and a beautiful a garden over here full of flowers. And the female coquette is still here, just sitting and relaxing over there. And yeah, I'm uh, Juan Diego from Life for Nature Tours. And this is a wonderful, it's been a wonderful morning. How's your, how's your, Rusted Nape Wood Rail, Anthony, over there. It's working. Uh, they are um, scanning the uh, the flooded area, the swampy part, getting some insects. Very cooperative at the moment. Uh, one is just running uh, to the to the edge. This other one is, you know, so close that you can see all of the details, the color of the beak, the pink coral um, legs, and all of the characteristic group. Oh, something scared them. I Recently, while I was uh, preparing for the show, um, a yellow-headed caracara just flew over and scared every everybody in the uh, in the neighborhood. But uh, luckily, it was just you know uh, this quick um, a scary moment for them, and now birds are back. Hi, Meche. Hello, hi, Patira here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look at that beautiful <laughs> mama. Oh, just left. <laughs> Well, it's in the ground here. Let's see if I can get it. So cool to see that mammal in the show. <laughs> yeah, it's gone. <laughs> and it's always, um, always really cool to to see. Hi, Mark. I think you're mute. Yeah, you sorry. Go. There's quite a lot of background noise, but uh, welcome to the Netherlands, where I've got here a long-eared owl. I've got uh, eight in a roost here. And um, it's just in the town where I live. So um, oh, in the winter, these birds like this gather up together. Um, last week, they were sort of in the broadleaf trees, as they are today, luckily. Um, and then as, as the trees lose those leaves, then they will go more into denser trees, into pine trees and that, that sort of thing. But um, apologies if you get a lot of noise here. I'm actually just... As I said, in, in the town where I live, and it's it's quite a busy road, and then there's a row of oak trees where there, as I said, I've got, I've got about seven or eight 
at the moment? Well, it's interesting. We have something in common. Yeah, we are we are burning from basically the roadside, and we're still getting some superb birds for for the for the show. So, thank you for showing us that uh, beautiful owl. Great. You see, you see now that uh, as people go past, and probably as I talk as well, and uh, there's some uh, excavating going on be behind me. You'll see that <laughs> the tufts go up, so they're not actually ears; they're just quite long feathers that they put up. And um, sometimes you see that as well. If, if if there's a disturbance or another one comes to join them, they they put up those ear tufts that gives them gives them the name. Uh, we're going across to Texas. That makes me feel a bit warmer. <laughs> what have you got there, uh, Brittany? Uh, we're trying to find a tricolored heron that just flew in close by. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's really close up. Wow. A little, little bit on the wrong side of the light, but it just flew in close by on a perch. Uh, gives it a nice glow around the outside. Yes. So is that quite a, a common species where you are? Yes, this is one of our favorite species here uh, at the South Padre Island Birding and Nature Center and along the Texas Gulf Coast. Not as widespread as the Great Blues we saw earlier. They're mainly a Gulf Coast species, Atlantic co Coast. And uh, they love he um, the shallow water here on the mudflat. They love to eat tiny little minnows. And they're very and active they when they feed. Are they quite active? Oh, they're quite active. I was just going to ask that if they're one of the more active herons. Yeah, they are. They're really fun to watch. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Flew off into the to the wetland. To start his day. Wow, that's um, amazing. That about that owl just hanging out right there. That's awesome. Yeah, and just watching. There's quite a few people walking past. As I said, it's quite a, a bit busy road, and a lot of people. Um, occasionally people are now looking at, at what I've got the telescope trained on. But apart from that, they, a lot of people just walk past and, and drive past without even seeing them. So uh, it's amazing if, if you do take the time, even close to where you live, to, to go out. And there's probably especially in these times to, to go out and get a bit of air and just look around you where you live. It, it's, it's great what you can find. So That's that amazing. Colored heron back. We got a great blue heron out in the distance now, and the tide is going down a little bit, so we're starting to see some sandpipers taking advantage of the mud exposed. I see them. Some little peeps out in little little far out there, but uh, we've been getting lee sandpiper migrating in. Those look like lee sandpipers. Some western sandpipers as well. So I Dunlin see a are question starting for you arrive. about the tricolored heron. Someone's asking, uh, what makes it tricolor? Oh, that's a good question. They've got three colors that are pretty, pretty visible. Uh, they have like a kind of like a blue-gray back. The adults have a bit of maroon on the base of the neck, and then uh, then they have a white belly. Um, and that that white belly is the best way to identify them. There's okay, so I saw the two colors, I think, but I uh, might have missed the, the third color. I'll look out for that if you manage to get it in again. Yeah, here's some short billed dowichers probing around on the mud flat. Oh, Kingfisher. Yeah, Kingfisher, yeah. Uh, keeping with uh, uh, birds that uh, like aquatic environments. Um, not far away from uh, where I am at the moment, I have this uh, ring Kingfisher um, just planning to get uh, some uh, fish out of a little pond that is uh, not far away from where I uh, got the um, uh, the russet uh, uh, wood rail. So in this area, there's uh, possible to get up to three different species of kingfishers. Uh, ring kingfisher is the largest one that we have in Costa Rica. Then uh, uh, another one that is uh, smaller in size, is the uh, green kingfisher that might show up here. And even we have the tiniest uh, kingfisher of Costa Rica coming to this, uh, to, to this area. See, it's quite productive. So three possible species of kingfishers uh, that eventually show up. So really, There's really cool to, to uh, uh, add this one to the list. Hey, Carlos. Hello, hello, good morning. Look at those colors. 
Look at this beautiful crimson back tanager. I'm here at the Canopy BMB in the Gamboa area. And uh, we're looking at these um, uh, beautiful uh, crimson back tanagers. There's a local mafia called the Orange Inn Parakeet. This guy takes <laughs> over everything. How are you guys doing? How are you going, Anthony? How's everything in Costa Rica? At the moment, it's uh, here where I'm located. It's overcast. Tourism yeah. is uh, a little a little coming back. But, right. uh, you know, plenty of birds around to see. I see a few, few ones that I need. And, uh, well, uh, enjoying uh, to share with you again and, uh, and the rest of the, of the crew to, uh, to our beloved friends uh, behind the screen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That's a gorgeous king feature, man. That ring king feature is gorgeous. I had a nice uh, red-legged horned creeper. Uh, he's up here. We'll see. Don't get busy. I'm gonna move the scope up a little bit. See if we can get this gorgeous honey creeper. Whoa. Oh, there there show us. Go. Oh, there. Stay, there you stay go. There. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> of course. They do that. Uh, great dynamic of feeders. Really? Um, yeah. Really interesting yeah. to see how each individual is coming, is waiting for the turn, and uh, is carrying other birds. So yeah. super cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I was looking at a nice coquette that Juan Diego had. It's really nice. Very oh, nice. my God. Yeah, not far away from where he is. And, and I was like, oh, I want to be there. I want to wanna see that. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, I had a green some back down here. We'll see if I can put it on here. Again, we'll see if we cooperate. Uh, if I can focus on this one. Oh, here's a plain see, color. Plain color tanager. This is a very small tanager, uh, but it's not, not very colorful. But if, when they're excited, you can look at the shoulder. They had a nice, bright blue patch uh, when they're excited. So normally uh, the male will show that. Oh, gorgeous plain color um, tanager. So, so uh, here, Carlos, uh, what yes. elevation are you now? I'm here in the lowland. Lowland forest, uh, uh, 200 meters above sea level. Very, very low right now. Uh, it was very, it's overcast right now. Uh, it was windy earlier, but now the wind is, is died down, so it's good. Oh, what do we got there? Texas, bring me in heavy. How are you guys doing? Good. We found the tricolored heron again. He just, he just oh, got caught a fish. Wow. Oh, I love that behavior. Well done. Now, Look at yeah. that. Now he's turned uh, on. He's uh, running around on the mud flats. The tide is perfect. This is a, just about a, an inch or so of tide, just perfect for him to run around out there and catch his little fish. Wow. He's got a great really blue heron nice. in front of him, but there he goes walking to the right. He's a little distant, but you can see that white belly. That's a good wow, way to identify this that. bird. There he's go. He's going to start running after the fish now. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, we see lots of these birds here along the boardwalk, and they're one of the favorites. Here we go. Now, now it's running. Now, oh, now we got a, a reddish egret beyond the tricolored heron too, which is another one of our specialty birds here along the Texas Gulf Coast. But, but this one is strictly coastal. The one back there preening. Good so, morning. Good morning. This is uh, Sharon, a.k.a. Bird Chick from up in Minnesota, where it's about 17 degrees. <laughs> wow. Hey, Sharon. Hey. So uh, I, I have about a dozen blue jays that uh, are raiding my feeder and also kicking a bunch on the ground because they have a contract with the deer in my area. <laughs> uh, that makes you feel a little warmer. It does. It does. I enjoy watching the activity and I, I'm enjoying this comparison of blue heron and blue jay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He's, he's busy eating that, that seed. Yeah. It's interesting. They, uh, they they, they will take quite a bit of it and they'll cache it around here. Uh, that's, that's how a lot of our acorns end up getting planted is because they'll do the same with acorns in the fall. That's cool. Oh, now this blue jay is actually eating something as it's pecking between its toes. But let's see, so we have that guy on top. And then I, I'm gonna pan down to the bottom because underneath the feeder, I just have a huge amount of blue jays. And they just keep arriving. 
until a goshawk shows up and then they all take off. But they will be here all day. <gasps> Is this Tim? Tim, hi. I love your goldfinches and I miss you so much. I don't know if you're on mute, hi. but. Sharon? Yes, hi, Tim. Hi, how are you? Well, how, I cannot hi. believe you're 17 degrees and we're about, we're, we're not far off that, but it's still just brilliant. And of course, at the moment in the UK, it is relatively mild. Uh, there's a lot of food around for everybody. And of course, what's happening is that, uh, um, you know, most of the birds are feeding on the berries and the natural food. So you know, it's really early, but we've got goldfinches coming in. As you can see, a chaffinch just came in quickly then. Um, oh, the other thing, look out for a sec, oh, the great tit and blue tit, uh, obviously common garden birds here in the UK. There's a marsh tit coming in, I believe. Coming in now. Coming in. Oh, made a quick, that's a good bird, the marsh tit. Not easy to see. It's, uh, It'll come in again. Yeah, it again. While you were, uh, everyone was chatting, there's the uh, female chaffinch at the bottom. Uh, the males are cracking. We'll hopefully get one of those in a moment. But uh, are you having a good time? Oh, here's the market. That's a really good uh, I'm just, good I'm bird. having a great time because I miss so many of you people. So it's fun to get to go birding with you, even if I'm doing it up at a cabin in northern Minnesota and you're doing it over in Rutland. But isn't this just brilliant? This is what this is birding's all about. It's bringing people together. And I mean, you know, good old Eber, good old Sorosky for organizing this. It's just a fantastic uh, way of us keeping together, especially yeah, in I, I agree. hard times. Yes, yes. And I like how you mentioned that the birds were going for natural foods because this cabin has a lot of natural foods around. Uh, the other day I had a pair of common red poles eating on some goldenrod. So that is really important. Oh, oh look nice. at what we have here. Jonathan, you're on mute, but I'm loving what you're showing me right now. I miss you too. Uh, hi, Jonathan. Looking forward to seeing you. What have you got on offer of for us? Hi, guys. Apparently, there's a bit of an echo problem, uh, unless it's resolved by now. Cool. Uh, this is a white throated or Smyrna kingfisher. And. Uh, He's just chilling here. We've got um, on the coast in the Magan Michael fish ponds. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, spending time with both of you guys Mark. here. That was one and, of my favorite yeah. birds that oh, I got. Cold, on that trip. And uh, yeah, we've got happening now. We've got uh, three species of kingfisher here. Besides this guy, we've got pied kingfishers, which I hope to get in the scope here shortly. And uh, we've got your uh, common kingfishers from the UK are here now for the winter, Tim. So uh, that's awesome. All right, the Blue Jays are still chowing down. Oh, it looks like. Oh, wait, do I have a. Is that my melanistic squirrel back there? I'm hoping besides my blue jays that I get uh, my fox or my mink coming by. Ooh, what happened hey, so here, Lizzie? Hey, Lizzie, yeah, the are blue you jays. Me some oyster catchers? Uh, yeah, so I'm a, on a beach in England and it's really windy, so I'll apologize <coughs> now for the shake. Um, I'm currently like kneeling in the sand. But yeah, we've got um, some oyster catchers just feeding on uh, this mussel bed. Um, so we so it's low tide at the moment. Um, oh, nice! So there's just loads of uh, feeding opportunities for all these waders. So yeah, you can see they've got that like nice, nice distinctive um, white collar in their winter sort of winter plumage. Oh yeah, oyster catchers are amazing. So yeah, they're pretty cool. And then yeah. ooh, we've also got like there's a red shank uh, just to the right as well. So they've got their bright red legs, but it's currently in a pool of water. <laughs> but i'll try and focus it a bit more so you're actually outside i'm in the warmth of my cabin because it's 70 degrees uh or 17 degrees fahrenheit what's uh what's the celsius situation over by you so celsius wise it's about 10 well it feels like it so uh, <laughs> i'm currently wrapped up on the beach in various layers <laughs> uh, so yeah i think you've got the better deal being inside and i'd much rather have a bit of snow to be honest we're currently like mild and windy and a bit and just rains all the time 
Oh my goodness. So it's all a bit gray. Well, I appreciate um, you being the brave person out in the wind while I'm snug in a cabin right now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, right. I'll get a coffee when I get back inside. But no, it's lovely down here. And there's like no one down here. So the beach, so we're in lockdown version two for the UK. So um, it means that you're not really meant to travel apart from exercise. Oh, what size is the oyster catcher? Um, so it's, well, it's quite hard to tell on this scale, isn't it? About how big, small the oyster catcher is. So it's a medium sized wading bird. Uh, it depends what you're familiar with as well. Um, so I like to try and compare it to another bird. Um, but yeah, a medium sized uh, wading bird um, is what I'd say. I was going to say, here in the U.S., uh, it's usually one of the larger ones that you'd see. I mean, it makes sanderlings look downright teeny tiny. Uh, yeah, so, and then if you put it next to a curlew, it looks small. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some curlews down here, but they're a bit out of the way. Uh, so, yeah, medium-sized is what I'd say. So you can see how windy it is. Their feathers are getting blown, like, all over the place. Well, I'm loving the chance to see some shorebirds because, yeah, with lockdown, we're not on official lockdown in Minnesota, but they're they're getting pretty close to it. So, oh, okay. Uh, and I don't get too many shorebirds in my backyard. <laughs> oh no, but you get some pretty cool other birds instead, by the looks of things. Oh, we do, we do. You know, we get the pileated slash pileated woodpecker up here, which I think that's closest to Europe's uh, great black woodpecker. Um, so it, it should show up and. We've, we're having a tremendous year for evening gross beaks in the United States. Oh, okay. Oh, brilliant. And then, of oh. course, uh, the winter finch forecast was completely wrong this year. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but that's great. That means we're getting a lot of winter finches. Uh, we had some yeah. flyover crossbills yesterday. Ah, nice. That's cool. Yeah, so because it's been so mild here, we've not really had that much migrant. The migrants have been a bit slow coming in. Um, there's been a few good birds around, but yeah, it's been quite slow. We just need some some cold weather to push them across the, the North Sea. I'll be happy to loan some to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, send, send some our way. We'll, we'll, be, we'll gladly receive some. <laughs> All right. So yeah, All send right. some gross beaks our way. So what part of England are you in right now, Lizzie? So I'm in Norfolk, so that's sort of uh, the eastern side in the southeast Anglia, uh, edge of the wash. All right, looks like we're getting uh, some, uh, some shorebirds from Valencia. Hi guys, how Hi. are you? This is Janina. I'm I'm coming live from Albufera in Valencia, Spain. Lovely and sunshine day. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> it looks pretty cold. My God, it is very cold. <laughs> yeah, but no, wow. here we we are almost springtime. It's 22 degrees, sunshine. It's uh, beautiful. No wind at all. Um, all the birds are a bit lazy today. Waiters are resting. No, no, not much around. But yeah, it's a beautiful uh, brackish water lake in the Mediterranean Sea area. So uh, here we do have a few green shanks on the screen, dunlins. And just a few minutes ago, there were a few slender bilgars around. Usually by this time of the year, they are gone. Uh, uh -huh. They move south for wintering. But this year, probably they will stay longer, uh, even all over the winter. So, yeah, temperatures are really high right now. Oh, yeah, I'm envious of that. I mean, I can just see it in the light in that photo. It looks, it does look nice and toasty warm. And Spain yeah. is a beautiful place to go birding. I cannot wait to go back there again. Yeah, you are more than welcome. The eastern coast, uh, I mean, this region is not too well known for bird watching, but because we haven't done uh, the right promotion until the past probably five years. And right now it's getting one of the main hotspots. Yeah, we, we do have a good range of birds and and good places for, for doing it. So yeah, you're welcome anytime. Yes, well, the, the amazing we, thing we, about Spain is uh, not only the birding, but the wine and the food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? There's a few experience uh, around this area that are named birds and wines, so you can combine them perfectly well. 
That's yeah, some yeah. of my favorite ways to go birding, especially if I'm not the person who's <laughs> driving the field trip van. <laughs> we can arrange that. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> so what's a, oh, they flown. Um, uh, either in the way they all went because the squirrel left either the fox or the mink is about to run through oh this blue jay came back oh nice i think the mink just ran uh on the edge of the lake i tried to put some mink food out but it seems more interested in the bowls and uh i did get a blue jay the other day oh good that's a nice one yeah well here, these are a bit lazy today. They don't want to move. There's a mallar coming. But I mean, oh, the no. highlights of, of the day with um, Diego and Juan Diego and Anthony and Mark, even with the long year round, was fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. And look, it looks like we have a snowy egret uh, to oh, complement nice. our blue jays and our uh, green shanks. Good morning, Brittany and Javi. Hey, good morning. That is a great bird. I love how we, we can see all the good field marks on a snowy egret. All right. Yeah. Nice and close. What else? Uh, what, what, what kind of birds are you hearing over there? Oh, hey, I see. <gasps> Look at that, honey creepers. Hi, uh, yeah, honey creepers. Shame. Yeah, look, look, look at the one on top. See all of the variations of colors, some uh, non-breeding males, females. Oh yeah, oh, oh play, play color play thrush. thrush. <laughs> yeah, our national bird. Yeah, this is getting very active. Blue gray tanager also. Oh. It's waiting for its turn to get some uh, papaya and bananas from the feeder. So as I'm coming, coming down here following, following the... the um, um, Hi Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Ooh, what do we have now, Jonathan? Whoop, oh, is some, having some hope, issues. We have another bird with blue in it. We'd have a blue trifecta going on. Yeah, a little blue around, huh? <laughs> that would be the word, uh, one of the most beautiful words in Spanish, according to, to experts. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see what, what else. Yeah, clay color thrush. Costa Rica's national bird, and here a female um, scarum tana year. So brownish with uh, with light blue. Beak. Hey, Carlos. Hey. Beautiful mud yes. mud. Oh, look at this whooping mud mud. This is one of those birds that have been split in the past years. Let me see if I can adjust the image here a little bit. Yeah, whooping mud mud is. Um, Panama, the canal zone area, and then down to South America. Look at this, beautiful. Look at the red eye. Whooping. Yeah, beautiful bird. We have uh, yeah. been quite quite very active, in, even though it's a uh, little you know, overcast. Oh, look at that honey creeper you have there. This is one of my favorite yeah. birds. You know, that's one of the birds that got me into birding. Actually, oh, really? Well, that's a great uh, story. Well, actually got me in trouble, and then I got into birding. Uh, but my official bird is the one that you have below. The clay color thrush. That's the one that got me into birding. The clay color thrush. That got because because Ooh, when, I found, when I when I found a nest of this of the clay color thrush, I could not believe the color of the eggs. And I could not believe that such a brown bird we have a beautiful turquoise blue color eggs. So that's how I got into nature. Beautiful. Yeah, what a contrast, huh? Yeah. Between yeah, the color know, of, the, uh, of the yeah. of the bird and the yeah. On the hopefully, 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 when you come down to Panama, when I go there, we can sit down with a beer or coffee or tea, tea for me, and we can just chat that, about, you know, <laughs> how I got it. Definitely, doing. yeah. I'm gonna write mm -hmm. down in my agenda. Um, yeah. With some friends, we got uh, you know uh, uh, a trip this year, but was canceled due to well, what we all know. But um, yeah. yeah, hopefully in the next years, uh, we're gonna have a a, a trip to. To your to your country in search of well. hopefully harpy well. harpy eagle and a few yeah. other lifers. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need to some of the birds that don't reach that. Costa Rica. I, I want to try that new new telescope with the harpy eagle so I can see the DNA. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so you're gonna <laughs> basically yeah. kill it. Yeah. Well, yeah, whatever. in a good sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excellent. No, so it's, it's good. You know, despite the the cloud, cloudy weather, you know, we have been seeing some really nice birds around here. 
there have been some toucans, uh, the yellow turtle toucan. The one used to be called black mandible and then chestnut mandible. Now it's yellow throated toucan. But it's been, it's been really yeah. nice. Very, very nice. It's been really nice to see uh, the people in Europe too and in Israel. So in, in uh, Sharon in Minnesota, nice to see that blue jay is really brave. I think it's very, very brave to be out in the snow like that. I wouldn't do that at all. This tropical Absolutely. Panamanian. <laughs> I will totally. Here, here we complain because it's uh, so much rain some days. But, yeah. you know, when the, when, when the temperature is over the 70s every day, you are like, okay. Yeah. I, 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 I rather do this. Yeah, but that's beautiful to see that blue jay. That blue jay is a, is a brave one. Okay, Brittany and Javi, what do you guys got there? Hey, Javi. Hey, guys. You, I see a dark image right now. Thanks for adding so much color here to this broadcast. Oh, we got a, what do you we're, we're back here on the South Padre Island, oh. coastal tip of Texas. We've got our osprey hanging out here. We've oh, been yeah. seeing more and more ospreys arriving in the last few weeks. Um, they come down here for the winter time where there's plenty of fish for all of them. These are pescatarians. Uh, so they fly around the Laguna Madre in search of, of fish and you can see they have some very strong talons. They swoop down low over the water and grab their fish. And once they got a good grip on that fish, that fish ain't going anywhere. This one's enjoying the view of the Laguna Madre Bay from its favorite perch. Wow, some more wow, fish some eating more birds. Fish eating birds. Yeah, guys, uh, another species of kingfisher, pied kingfisher. Um, this is more or less our last hour of light. Here, too, it's pretty beautiful, uh, about 24 degrees, uh, nice and sunny. Uh, very nice to see the ambiance uh, in Minnesota. Shaz, good luck. Um, but, yeah, this is another species of kingfisher that nests here, and Israel is the westernmost point in the world where we can see. Hello there. Did, did, welcome back to the, uh, the Netherlands with the long-eared owls. This bird was uh, just preening, having a, a stretch of the wings and uh, Sort of uh, washing between the, the the claws, so uh, it, it's it's having a bit of a snooze again. This is a this is a bird that'd be familiar to people, um, at least from the the books or pictures from uh, across northern Europe and across the United States and and Canada. But um, it's it's also one that can be seen sort of quite well during the daytime if you if you can find the roosts so the last there's a known roost in the town where i am but i've also been cycling around the last few days looking for trees with signs of of white on there so from the droppings they tend to make quite a lot of mess under the roosts if you get sort of 10 or 15 birds in, in one or two trees next to each other it can make quite a lot of of mess so that that's one of the tricks to try and find them um, and they can be right in towns, right in, in sort of houses, in, in gardens. So uh, oh, the wind's blowing this one around quite a bit. It's just going out of view. I don't know how much they've managed to sleep during the daytime with this sort of uh, weather, <laughs> getting buffeted around. <laughs> well, that one's going to bed. This green heron is starting to wake up here in Texas. This is those, one of the smallest herons we see here along the wetlands the green heron and uh it's not a wading bird like some of its other cousins we've been seeing they have short legs so they hunt from shore it's also trying to catch some fish and what they lack in leg length they make up in neck length and this one's down on the low low snags right over the water no like belly flop yeah it, <laughs> it might not be able to reach the water from there but they'll do a belly flop right in the water when they spot their fish and then they'll fly with it to shore wow that's hey. a colorful bird <laughs> a little oh, a little okay. splash of red over here <laughs> wow Gorgeous. and a totally contrasting family but that 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 uh heron over there was just pretty nice green heron wonderful bird as well so well, cool here, we have, birds. <laughs> here we have a totally different uh, family toucans so this is a wonderful color arasari they, they're moving in a small family group here in uh, 
in the Arenal foothills in Costa Rica. I just saw them flying over. They went to try to pick up some uh, like, like little berries down in a, in a bush by the garden. And the people is walking by. So they went up to the trees. This one here is up in the trees, looking down. He's waiting for the right moment when the people stop walking. And he will jump down to the berries he's, he's trying mm. to get. Um, it's, a, it's a nice angle, by the way, because you can see that red rump. You know, it's, it's with the color Arasari. You know, when, when a bird have uh, something like color in the name, you always look for that field mark. But sometimes when they turn and they show other field marks, they have really nice features as well. Like this beautiful scarlet rump. And it's a, it's a nice little bird, quite common in a big range. And we have something over there, Janina. What's that? That looks like a nice uh, gold. Yeah, turn. it's a slender bilgal. Nice. Are, yeah, this is our medium, uh, well, small, medium size. Uh, and they are very southern distribution in Europe. They should be moving soon to winter up south of Spain or even crossing up to Africa. But yeah, there's three of them still around. Uh, we were saying that it's really hot during these days. Uh, nothing usual, not usual at this time of the year. So things are changing and birds are suffering this climate change, of course. That's uh, something that we can't deny. Oh, that, right. oh, we have missed. Oh, hi. There's a black neck grief. <laughs> I don't know if Ooh, it nice. Is can really see I, I, I stop for a second. Can you zoom a little Diving bit more now. to the right? Oh. Oh, that's nice again. Yep, the Blue Jays, uh, they disappeared for a minute because uh, we had we had a bit of an exhibitor blast through. And I'm going to move us just a tiny bit because I think I have a woodpecker on one of my feeders. Oh, that's nice. I think we got a downy. Well, I, I'm competing with the woodpecker attention over here too. Oh. <laughs> oh, we oh, mine no. flew. <laughs> Oh, it's still there, it's still there. <laughs> my woodpecker, my little downy woodpecker got completely intimidated by, is that alineated? It's a pale build. Pale build, oh. Pale build woodpecker. It's a beautiful individual. It's moving a lot, so it's, it's been a little bit uh, struggling to try to find the right angle to, to have a good view. I, I understand, yeah. My birds he, are now suddenly moving around quite a bit, but wow, that is a great bird. Because <laughs> I understand it, that bird also does a double knock. Yes, yes, that this one does a double knock. It's, it's very loud and you can hear this double knock from a long distance. Normally, it's a, it's a common sound in the rainforest here where I live. Uh, and this yes. is a beautiful bird because it has entirely white bill, you know, it, and that gives the name pale bill woodpecker. It's I think a it's good the size. closest I've gotten to seeing uh, an ivory billed woodpecker. <laughs> <laughs> You're totally right. You're totally right. We can, we can get one of those and release it over there in the swamps. In the southern U.S., and then uh, f fool some people over there. <laughs> well, and 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 like the the ivory billed wood, woodpecker used to do, it, it also did a double knock. So that's why I always remember the pale bill does the double knock. Yeah, this one it's getting like some uh, kind of worms out of a, a little branch over there. It's been picking really hard. Kathy, you, you got snow. Kathy. I had snow. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, it's been really cold and snowy here, so we've got some cedar birds. Um, we got um, European starling out there, some American goldfinches, with a blue jay that's coming in from the back. So. All right. Yeah. I am not inside the warm cabin. I am outside. <laughs> <laughs> that looks that looks pretty cold, Kathy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a TV it's professional, so I figured out these things when Dale asks me to do them. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Costa Rica looks much warmer. <laughs> it is. There's... It is certainly windy, windy because we have this hurricane coming close by, so it's kind of windy, but but uh, fine so far. Costa Rica is fine right now, fortunately. Yeah. So we have the European starling who's been eating. Oh, there comes the blue jay. Can you see the blue jay there on the feeder? I have a woodpecker that's about to hit this feeder. There we go. This I'll, is a I'll hairy move. woodpecker. So you can the thing you... I love about my hairy woodpecker is it mobs the mink every time it's in the yard. Ooh, a little contrasting view over here. What are you about to show us? 
I'm, I'm not gonna make you feel bad about it, but I mean, it, this is a this is a bad day in Costa Rica because it's cloudy. But it's <laughs> <laughs> that but view still... is off the chain. Yeah. Okay, so if you're gonna share your view, just as a contrast, I'm gonna share mine. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see some mist coming out the lake. There's a thin layer of ice because it was super cold. The Jenkins Lake froze uh, last night. Oh my goodness, is that a volcano? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is beautiful. A crazy, beautiful view. Beautiful I'm view. everywhere. It's a. <laughs> yeah, you're. Uh, <laughs> you're dressed uh, a lot differently than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a little, a little jacket. It's, <laughs> but the volcano is back there, and it's are in a lake back there. Oh, that's that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a yeah, wonderful view. <laughs> I would just want to brag about this a little bit. <laughs> I will go back to the bird. Sorry. <laughs> oh, so all right. Oh, it's Tim. Any more marsh tits over there, Tim? Oh, that was just Yeah, a hang on. Yeah, the marsh tit was coming in a few seconds ago. Just wait. We've had, again, a sparrow hawk or something that went through. Let me just check the other two feeders there. No, no. Uh, blue tits everywhere, as you'd expect this time of year. Uh, big family parties. It's been a good year for breeding of the tits. And I think, you know, you're seeing large family parties going through. And our very mild winter last year, actually, I think created a much better survival rate. We also had a nut hatch went through just now, but sadly, like nut hatches do, they zoom in and they zoom out. But keep watching because long tail tits are where? Way up in the, in the far wood. I'm not sure I should get those. A, gold, a goldfinch come in. There are half a dozen goldfinches on there just now. They are just spectacular birds. I mean, you know, there you are in your in the tropics showing us all these brilliantly coloured birds. And we have to you know, cope with, uh, well, you have clay-coloured robin. Uh, clay-coloured thrush, of course, is a pretty boring bird. But, of course, it's a beautiful national bird. Um, our robin hasn't appeared yet. Um, it's usually at the bottom of the feeders. But um, uh, it was around this morning. But uh, not as yet. Now, let me just check. Nothing else is around. What Penny say? What do you say? Hey, here in view, a little bit of contrast. Well, in uh, in Europe, across the Atlantic, you have some colors. Here in the tropics, I'm showing some brown birds. See, that's what we get sometimes. So, gray-headed chachalacas. It's one of the medium-sized birds that we have in uh, in in the area. Quite noisy. It's so noisy that sometimes uh, uh, people who talk a, a lot or never stop talking are referred as chachalacas. So it's a really interesting uh, uh, nickname that we use in, in Costa Rica. So um, it's a super cool bird. And um, yeah, it's easily found almost uh, everywhere along the uh, Caribbean side. Hi, Lizzie. Hey, Anthony. They're pretty cool. And now I've got a friend who's really noisy and I'm going to call him a chachalaca. <laughs> I'm gonna take that one. There, there, there you go. <laughs> so we've got um, a Bartel Godwit just feeding in the in the sand at the moment in search of um, some lugworms by the looks of things. So these are all in their winter plumage at the moment. How how cool is that? So yeah, well, I think it's oh, it's kind of catching something. I think. Let's zoom in nice. a little bit on it. It's working there. So yeah, in the summer they'll have like a bit of a brick red sort of breast to them and now they're just looking a bit brown and that well, a bit mottled now is probably what I call them. Quite slender looking. There you go, it's eating something. Always oh, really cool to see shorebirds. Yeah, so these are so they kind of, yeah, doing what they do, sort of feed along the shore edge. Yeah, I can, I can see it uh, working there, walking, scanning the mud. Yeah, so it's quite cool because obviously they've all got their different bill lengths so they can feed in different parts of the beach at the moment. It's, it's, it's actually looks like they got a really great adaptation for, for beach. 
playing hide the head, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the caption. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> very, very accurate well, to what's going least, on now. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's doing. This one's getting blown along the beach at the moment. You can kind of see how windy it is down here. Well, at least it's doing the nice thing and walking towards us. Let's just focus it in a bit more. Hi, from Ithaca, New York again. We're lots of snow. <laughs> yeah, it's great to I'm... see the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, been snowing the whole time here. So um, just kind of trained on our feeders. We have these live feeder cams that you can watch all the time um, at Cornell. So we're just checking out. I don't even see anyone there right now. It's kind of quiet. Yeah, everyone's gone, but they'll come back. Nice to see yeah, at least we can, we can, At least we can sit and watch at home. Oh, look. Your feeders. Yeah. Okay, we can just pan around here. Pretty quiet otherwise. Birds here in Ithaca. We're in the snow in the winter. We don't get much, but uh, we're here at our, our famous pond, our loving pond that we love so much. Um, Oh, Juan Diego is going to show us some really like, cool. Oh, wow. Juan's oh. <laughs> got something pretty cool. Okay. This is the first time in, in a couple dozen virtual tours I've done that I get an Emerald Tanager on show. <laughs> they it's very cool. Right. Like, like right now, just disappear. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but we saw it briefly. <laughs> you saw it briefly, yeah. It, we did you, see you, it briefly. <laughs> you might get blind because it's so bright. That was a male because males have this. We'll have to re rewatch it afterwards. Yeah, that's the thing with birding. They come and go, but we have such great chances to see such wonderful birds. And it looks like we're getting down to the hour. Do you have any more birds that we want to highlight before we call it? Oh, Mark, oh. Mark's coming back with the owl. Uh, I've come back onto the first one. The, the other seem to be uh, putting their heads away hi i see we've got similar sort of wind conditions but uh it, it it's it's for me always middle of november this sort of gray weather that we have in the netherlands and in the uk so to see that's always a bit of the time where i think well uh, it's quite easy to put off going out but wh when you see the birds that we're seeing from everyone then it, it really encourages me to think well i, I should go, actually go out more absolutely it's definitely what i've been discovering more in like lockdown as well just going for a little walk out the out the back of my house and um it's just amazing what you can just see when you look so it's a great time to discover stuff as well so i've been discovering like shorted owls hunting at the back of my house brilliant there's sometimes and i've never had it here because where where, the, where i am now it's quite far inland but you can occasionally find shorted owls Amongst the long-eared owl roosts, but oh, uh, nice. I, I've never had that that uh, fortune my, myself. But uh, they're showing that this one that I've got in view is showing the the ear tufts again quite nicely. Yeah, it's very cool. We got another kingfisher to add to the list today. Oh, brilliant! And we got kingfisher a belted day. belted kingfisher here on on top of one of our bird blinds, South Padre Island. This is our winter visitor along the boardwalk so it's been a good kingfisher day for this virtual birding yeah yeah it's been brilliant these are so hard to get on the scope sometimes so we're so we're happy that we were able to squeeze this one in at the very end <laughs> brilliant where's it set on we've been chasing it up and down the boardwalk right now and it finally <laughs> perched for us brilliant yeah. <laughs> it's a nice male the females have some uh, rusty red along the belly. Hola, hola. Whoa, hola. I, I got the kingfisher here are kind of scared from this guy, the uh, <laughs> American crocodile. Wow. <laughs> this is probably about, I would say about 10 feet long. That um, is a big one. Yeah, so I'm, oh, here, at the ammo, I'm here at the ammo pond, a little wetland before the entrance of the pipeline road. So yeah, look at that big. 
That's so no swimming today. No swimming here today. Oh my god! There you go. So it's, it's a, a bit windy there, with, uh, Brittany and Javi, right? Yeah, yeah. We're right on the on the shores of the Laguna Madre, so the wind's picking up over here a little bit. Yeah. We get lots of good wind here on the bay, and we get alligators here, but we don't see crocodiles like that. That's amazing. Yeah, and normally, normally I'm in Texas this time of the year, <laughs> you know, for the Rio Grande Valley Bird Festival. I'm, I'm, oh, true, you know, true. Yes, yeah, I miss you. One. Yeah, missing you guys too. So I'm hopefully, glad you're hopefully next the year. From there. <laughs> At least we can do this, so we can uh, see, you know, the, what we have in our backyards now. Yeah, Birchick's got a woodpecker there in her backyard. Yeah, Yay! got a hairy woodpecker chowing down on some bats and wow. some other birds besides all the blue jays. Wow, excellent. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, thank you. That's really hey, yeah, nice. I'm enjoying the crocodile. We don't have too many of those up here. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do well. <laughs> All right. What a and cute little bird. You might have one of our Minnesota kingfishers. Most of them leave, leave us because everything freezes up. We might have one or two that hangs out here. But So, hey, Javi, uh, I just got permission from my boss uh, this winter that since I have to telecommute, uh, I get to telecommute for about five weeks from the Rio Grande Valley. So I'm hoping I might get to see you from six feet away this week. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's perfect. That's great. You, when you get to work remotely, you get to travel around. So that's pretty awesome. It gets me yeah. the opportunity. Yeah. So I, I just, I thought that's, I, I like Minnesota. Oh. Whoa, Anthony. Hey. What are you showing us now? I'm showing you a russet name wood rail. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bird that has been very cooperative uh, this, this morning since uh, we started the show. It's been the bird wandering and moving around, um, scanning there the uh, flooded area, and now it's printing. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a super bird, medium size, with a couple really cool stories around here. Owners have seen this one, uh, um, killing white throated crakes, and it was a bird that I was expecting for the show. And once um, there was one of those uh, wood rails killing an orange uh, sheen parakeet. Really? So it's a yeah, it's a super cool bird to see. But you know, it got this uh, predatory instinct. So it's a I really that is fascinating. I would think a parakeet would have a hard enough beak to give a wood rail a good fight back, but man, they must Yeah, it was, it, it was really cool. Actually, a friend of mine uh, saw it and is uh, preparing a, a short paper about it because it was a really in interesting uh, uh, incident to, to that <laughs> poor little guy. So um, um, occasionally he does that. I'm, I'm pretty sure with that uh, beak, you know, it can it can kill easily a, a a little bird, but most of the most of the food is uh, based on uh, arthropods and you know little fish, earthworm. But well, uh, if they have the chance, hey Carlos, hey, hey Carlos, hey, Carlos is back. It is Anna a jacana. It is a immature wattle jacana. Um, oh, this is uh, nice. one Thank of the birds so that tend to confuse that. a lot of people because you know. They don't think it's a jacana when they see it. It's a young one. So let me show you. Kind of very pale on the front. Look at the eye line in there. Beautiful black line to the back of the eye there. Really nice. I'm very very interested to to hear that the the uh, wood rail story about the orange sheen parakeet. Wow. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it it was it was really really interesting. So um, the little parakeet just got a. Uh, uh, close to the close to the ground, actually they, they they are flying there. See, it looks like they they are hearing the story and they got they got a scare. So, um, you gotta, hey Diego, hey, hey hello hello two of you. Um, I have a little flycatcher over here. It's a, it's a nice looking bird, you know. It, it looks smart. <laughs> it's calling. It's calling. If we pay attention, we can hear. It's called Great Cap Flycatcher. Oh well, but we have a hummingbird here. Great. Hey, Meche. Hello. Meche. Hi. Go ahead. Beautiful. Hi, we have here Let's a, a female white neck Jacobin. <laughs> yes, have lots of Jacobins today in the feeders here in nice. Rancho Naturalista to Rialba. Nice. That mm -hmm. that thorn, that thorn to its right, uh, adds a lot of uh, <laughs> the, mystery. The, the to male. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Uh, nice. He is much more attractive than her. Okay, here he is. Here he is. Beautiful male. Great colors. <laughs> Definitely a stunning oh, hummingbird that everybody wants to too. see. <laughs> yeah, the rail is still there, quite, quite calm at the moment, just printing, waiting for the next um, a moment to uh, add some, some food. Janina, hola. Hi, guys. We also have some, some colors here in Europe, okay? This is a kingfisher, another for the list. Hey, another one for the leaves. Great. Yeah. yeah, we do have one. It's resting. It has been over there for for a while. I can't really see if it's a male or female from here. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to see some colors around. You are doing great today. You have Jonah's fantastic birds. Well, is 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 the location a little bit of luck, and you know the audience also well deserves some uh, some great views. You know, it's been a really interesting way to uh, to travel the world with uh, with all of you guys, uh, jumping from uh, tropical forest to um, snow, and um, seeing all all of those birds. You know, um, it's it's a, it's a nice way to. Uh, to spend uh, an hour uh, on the internet. So thank you uh, for sharing all of all of those beautiful words and keeping us focused on what we like. Yanina's uh, kingfisher flew away and uh, showed up here in Israel, believe it or not. So a <laughs> uh, common kingfisher is the third of the bunch. Uh, the third species that we have in Israel. And this is a European bird that is uh, wintering here. They only recently arrived and it's going to spend the winter here. Uh, and I too just want to thank uh, Swarovski for putting together this awesome uh, collection of uh, birders and birds. And uh, yeah, we got to keep together and keep strong. Oh. Hey guys here with this beautiful view of a great blue heron in the mangroves and here on the Laguna Madre. This is one of our favorite sites to see here along our boardwalk, reminding us to stay patient, stay strong and bird on. And we're all gonna get through this and just enjoy nature and birds. Yeah. Wise words, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. Thank everyone for participating. So wonderful to bird around the world from the comfort of your home and see some amazing birds and enjoy all the sort of random chaos that comes with birding. The good ones come and then you miss them and then you get these great, amazing views of some wonderful species like this great blue heron. It's truly incredible. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology.